Trencherfield Mill in Wigan. Just going up to the gallery there. And here we are. Let's have a look at the spanners. <laughs> this is the biggest coal mining winding wheel in England. Just look at the size of that. And it's going to be running up soon on steam. Is this a, these are the pistons or the brakes? Yes. Maybe we don't think engines are a bit boring. Well, let me tell you. Where you're standing right now is a seriously important place in the history of Wigan and of the whole world. This engine is unique. It's the biggest of its kind, still working and in its original setting. Something you won't see anywhere else in the world. So, in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to prove to you that there's more to this engine than just pistons and oil. And to do that, we'll need to travel back in time. Our story starts back here in 1908. At this of mills like Trencherfield all over Lancashire and in Wigan thousands of people like these rely on cotton mills to earn their living. In fact back here in 1908 no other country in the world has a huge industry like the one they work in and it's all about this cotton white fluffy stuff that grows on plants in places like America and Egypt. And Trencherfield Mill, this massive building, has been built for just one reason. To take this cotton and spin it into this. Cotton yarn. The finished yarn is then taken to other mills to be woven into cotton fabrics. And back here in 1908, just about everyone in the world wants clothes made out of cotton. That means there are big profits to be made in the manufacture of cotton yarn, which has attracted successful business people 
like the owner of Trencherfield Mill. I have long believed that the people of Wigan deserve an up-to-date mill. This is Colonel William Woods, a local politician and businessman. He's invested lots of his money in having Trencherfield Mill and its engine built. And so it is with pride that my directors and I invite you to the grand opening ceremony of the new Trencherfield Mill. Uh, yours, etc. Get that invitation over to the Lord Mayor immediately, would you? Everybody who's anybody in Wigan is invited. My mill, with its magnificent steam engine, will have a production capability of the envy of many in Lancashire. Customers want to buy lots of cotton yarn, and now Colonel William Woods can sell it to them. That's why Trencherfield Mill and its engine are so big. Indeed, there are a few mills bigger. But why did they build this mill here, on this spot? rivers called canals. These help to carry goods from one place to another quickly and directly. This canal is called the Leeds Liverpool because at one end of it, in that direction, is Leeds and at the other end, in that direction, is Liverpool. In 1908, Liverpool was one of the world's greatest seaports. Ships from all over the world would dock there carrying different cargoes, including cotton. The raw cotton was unloaded from the ships in Liverpool and was transported along the Leeds-Liverpool Canal to this special dock at Trencherfield Mill. After the raw cotton was spun into <coughs> cotton yarn, it left the mill and they used the canal again to transport it away. Oh, and there's another reason why people decided to build cotton mills in Lancashire. It's damp here! <laughs> You see, when you're spinning cotton, the air needs to be damp or the cotton yarn breaks and that would slow down production, which isn't good. So, what happened to the raw cotton after it was unloaded at Trencherfield Mill? Well, on the five floors above the engine house, there were machines that would spin cotton into cotton yarn. Rows and rows of machines that needed lots and lots of power to drive them. And where did the power come from? You got it. The power was generated by the Trencherfield Mill steam engine. But wait a minute. Maybe you're thinking, why didn't they just take all the machines on the floors above us and <coughs> plug each one into its own electrical supply, like in a modern factory? The answer is that in 1908, there was no proper electric supply that anyone could plug into. There were electric motors around in 1908, but they weren't very good. And anyway, back then, lots of people thought that electricity would never replace steam power. Nobody had thought of having lots of small motors, each one running its own machine. They believed you had to centralise power. In other words, having one big engine in one place to run everything, like you can see here. But who actually built this amazing engine? Let's go and meet them. Bolton by a company owned by these two gentlemen, John and Edward Wood. That's Wood, by the way, no relation to Colonel Woods. Their company has built engines for lots of cotton mills. So, Colonel, she's all checked and ready to run. The largest mill steam engine our company has ever built. In fact, it's one of the biggest steam engines of this kind anyone has ever built. Excellent. Just think, massive power.
Colonel, you're looking at the result of 50 years refinement of steam engine design. Four cylinders, 16 valves, a triple expansion steam condensing engine producing 2,500 horsepower. If you didn't understand any of that, don't worry, neither did I. Ah, the Trencherfield Mill engine is the very best of its kind, built to last 100 years. Because it's so well designed, the Trencherfield Mill engine uses steam very efficiently. And you're sure its efficiency will help it to use coal very economically? You can be sure of it, Colonel. Excellent. Oh, I forgot to mention, Colonel William Woods doesn't just own Trencherfield Mill. He also owns the local mines that supply coal to fuel the engine's boilers. With the engine using coal so efficiently from his pits to spin the cotton yarn, the Colonel's hoping to become very rich. So, none of the power my coal generates will be wasted. The Colonel's been very clever. He's had Trencherfield Mill built so it's just the right size to house all the cotton spinning machines he needs to make full use of the mill engine's power. Very efficient. And my mill will make maximum profit. I was just going to say that. Everyone was amazingly proud of this engine and Trencherfield Mill because they were so important to Wigan. That's why the brickwork all around the mill building is so fancy. More like a house than a factory. Colonel Woods wanted to show it off. But how did it all work? Well, down under the engine are the boilers that make the steam that powers the engine. Like I said, back in 1908, the boilers in Trencherfield Mill were fueled by coal from the Colonel's pits. The coal was brought here to the mill along the Leeds Liverpool Canal. The only other thing they needed to make steam to power the engine was water. And they had all they wanted right here in the canal. Now the thing about steam is, it's not just hot, it expands, so it's under pressure. That means if you put it in a cylinder like this, it pushes like mad against the inside to get out. It's a bit like using this bike pump to increase the pressure inside this empty lemonade bottle. See how the force of that pressure drives the wheel. In our mill engine, the force of the steam pressure drives a wheel that's a bit bigger than the one on my model. This is the mill engine's flywheel. It weighs as much as seven double-decker buses. Can you see the ropes around the flywheel? There used to be over 50 of them, and they'd drive lots of smaller wheels on all five floors of the mill above us. Like this wheel up here on the fifth floor, for example. Now this wheel would turn a long shaft. And that shaft used to run right across this floor, up here in the ceiling. There were shafts on every floor of the mill, and attached to the shafts were more wheels and belts that turned the mill's cotton spinning machines ginormous machines stretching from here to here so the engine down there powered <laughs> machine after machine up here each spinning thousands and thousands of spindles at the same time making miles and miles of this as i told you the whole reason for the engine and the mill being here was simply to make cotton yarn and not forgetting all the people who relied on the Trencherfield Mill engine to power the cotton spinning machinery that provided them with jobs. Up to 450 of them, mostly women, used to come clattering through these gates in their clogs to start work at six in the morning. The Trencherfield Mill Engine is driving the machines that are making the cotton yarn that the whole world wants to buy. And it's helping to pay the wages of hundreds of families in Wigan. That's why the Trencherfield Mill Engine was so important back then, and it's still important today. It's the biggest and one of the most efficient steam engines still working. That's a piece of living history. And you're seeing it today exactly as people first saw it in 
In 1908, the cotton industry in Britain was amazingly successful and many people thought it would carry on that way forever. But then, as time went by, people in other countries learned how to spin good quality cotton yarn, so they stopped buying so much of it from Britain. People also found new ways of powering mills that were more efficient and cheaper than using steam engines. Hundreds of Lancashire cotton mills were closed and their steam engines broken up. But this one survived, rescued by Wigan Council in 1984. Of course, by then the Trencherfield mill engine had been running for nearly a hundred years and it was just about worn out. By 2002, the engine could no longer be run safely. So Wigan Council applied for money from the Heritage Lottery Fund to restore it. And because the Trencherfield mill engine is unique, a brilliant example of the best in early 20th century technology, the Heritage Lottery Fund decided to help. A company was found that could restore the engine to its former glory, just like it was when it was new in 1908. And now that it's fully restored, it'll go on running for another hundred years. See, I told you there was more to this engine than pistons and oil. If you want to know any more about our very special engine, just ask my friends down there. <laughs>